Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today we're out here in the shop. I got a little project that uh, brought up here. This is Bob Berry. He's from up in the Knoxville, Tennessee area and works with the Knox Makers, the Makerspace group up there. Correct. Which we actually shot a little video, a little tour of them several years ago. And uh, they've got a little 12-inch uh, joiner that they were needing Babbitt bearings worked up on it. So tell us a little bit about it. Uh, this is a Newman Manufacturing Company out of Greensboro, North Carolina, 12-inch joiner. Um, I forget how much it weighs. It's close to half a ton at least. Uh, this was acquired by the Maker Group in Knoxville uh, a couple of years ago and has sat idle thinking that we needed new Babbitt bearings poured for it. Um, so brought it down here for Keith's inspection. He says, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe we don't need to pour new bearings, but uh, he's going to get it working for us, I hope. I hope so, too. So this is one thing when, we, when you talk, I do a lot of stuff with Babbitt bearings. You guys know that. I've done a lot of Babbitt pours, whatever. But a lot of times when people get a machine that has Babbitt bearings in it, they just automatically assume, oh, the Babbitts need to be reworked because they're old, they're old bearings and they just need to be reworked. And I, I run into that a lot. And I think it's, it's you know, it's an old machine. Babbitt bearings, or it's old technology, you know, it's not, not like ball bearings now. And people just assume that if it's an old machine, it needs to have the bearings poured in it. But most of the time when I see a Babbitt bearing machine, uh, the Babbitts usually are not in terrible condition. Uh, and if they are, it's no big deal. You just melt out the old material, you re-pour them, whatever, which is what we were planning on doing on this. But when they brought it down and I took a look at it and started inspecting these, I, I think we can just work with what we got and instead of having to report new bearings. Uh, these, this actually does not look bad at all. We're gonna do some work to them. We're gonna get them tuned up um, and get them ready. I do see some things that need to be done. But I think what I'm gonna start off here is we're just gonna kind of show you the process of kind of inspecting these Babbitt bearings. Uh, Cause that's something I don't think I've really shown before is when not to pour new bearings. Usually I show when I'm pouring new bearings, but when, when do you not need to pour new bearings? Because that's, that's an important lesson to learn. So let's take a look at these a little closer and, and come up with, show you why I don't think we need to worry about re-pouring these bearings. Great. So when he brought this in, he had it all put together. And the first thing I did was I just kind of spun it by hand loosely, which the bearings the caps weren't tight. And I'm like, that doesn't really feel that bad. It felt pretty smooth and we took it apart and I started looking at the individual bearings. Now, a couple of things to note. You see these little slots down here in the bottom? This uh, bearing housing actually has a little cavity up underneath of the reservoir for oil to be in. And in this little slot, you would have had a wick, usually a piece of felt that would wick that oil up from the bottom and it would just rub against that shaft constantly. And that would just make sure that that shaft had a real light layer of oil on there. The other thing that that did is if you had excess oil in there, it kind of wicks into that little felt so it doesn't run all over the place. That's one of the issues I, I run into about Babbitt bearings is, is they can be messy. You can sleep, particularly if you go there, load them up with oil, turn it on, that oil's got to have some place to go. And if there's too much oil, it's just going to sling out. With these wicks, you still get a little bit of oil that, that will sling out, but not near as much. So this is actually a really nice setup, more modern uh, type bearing setup. But when I'm looking at, at these Babbitts, the first thing I want to look at is, you know, what, is the, what does the condition of the surface look like? Is it smooth? Is it, is it scored? Is it messed up? Or is it, you know, all right? Let me zoom you in a little bit closer and we'll just take a look at this one. So this is the, the long end, the side that when the motor pulley would go on the other side. But I'm looking at this, and like I said, the first thing I'm gonna look at is, is there, is there any scoring in here, any galling, anything that just looks really bad? You can definitely see some lines in here, you know, where it's been used over the years, but there's nothing in here that's really raising a big red flag as to, hey, this bearing is shot. Usually when they're shot, it's really obvious. I mean, there's big chunks missing. There's galling in there. Uh, you can see where maybe it got hot at some point and really messed things up. You know, I think that we can probably take a little bearing scraper and clean this thing up a little bit, get some of this roughness out of here, and we're going to be just fine. That is the beauty of Babbitt bearings is, is that you can continuously freshen these things up and, and keep them going. We typically will put shims between the top and bottom halves of the bearing, and as that that 
bearing wares, you go in here, you take it apart, you take a tiny shim out, uh, it tightens the bearing back up again, you freshen it back up with a scraper, you know, you get it where it's running good, but you can continue using those bearings for a really long time. And really when you need to repour it, it's like I said, when it's just totally scored up or you've just gotten down to where it's so thin that there's not enough material there to continue working with. There's plenty of Babbitt on both of these. So I really think that we're, we're good to go. So with that, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to start working on freshening these up and uh, go from there. So let's get in here and see what we can do. So this is a bearing scraper. Uh, they come in different sizes and whatever. I've got a bunch of these that I've picked up over the years. And basically what you do when you're scraping a Babbitt bearing is, is you take one of these scrapers and you just kind of work in here. The Babbitt's real soft. And right now I'm just kind of hitting the high spots. I just want to come in here. I don't really want to do a whole lot to these because they were actually in pretty decent shape, but I do, do want to just kind of real lightly just go through this. And if there's any high spots or rough spots in there, this will just kind of clean it up a little bit. And like I said, I'm not really, at this point, I'm not really trying to do any major scraping. Depending on how the bearing runs when we put it together, we may put some blue on the shaft, find the high spots and really go through the process of scraping it. But considering these bearings have ran in already, we're probably not gonna have to do that in this situation. When I'm doing new bearings, that's part of the process. But these bearings, have, you know, have kind of ran and, and ran in and been, you know, used for years. So we probably don't have any major problems with it as far as needing to be scraped. Um, I'm just trying to clean up any, any high spots in here and we'll go from there. So let's screw this. I'm going to do all the two, the bottom end or the front and the back. And like I said, that's about all we're going to do is just start there. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll be back. So the other thing I'm going to take a look at when I'm evaluating this is the shaft that's running in there. And, you know, there's a little bit of tarnishing on this. I'm running my fingers on it. And, you know, it's, it's not perfect. But for a Babbitt bearing, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to wear in if there's any indentions or whatever. You know, you have a little oil groove or something in there. It's not, not a big deal if you have some areas that are, you know, below the surface or what have you. Um, this is not bad at all. You know, again, if the Babbitt bearings were really bad, you'd see a lot of scoring on the shaft, and then you might want to have to come in here and redo this. But what I'm seeing is not bad. I do want to take this over. We're going to put it in the lathe, and I'm just going to polish these. I'm just going to hit it with some emery cloths real lightly. Uh, and again, I'm just trying to make sure everything is smooth more than anything else. And um, I mean, I can run my fingernail on there, and there are a few little places that aren't just perfect, but Again, for a Babbitt bearing, it's low tech, guys. This is going to be just fine. So we'll take that to the lathe, polish that real quick, and uh, I think we'll be ready to try to start reassembling this. And we're going to have to make some shims to put in the bearings, but I think we're going to be fine here. And I've got this over here in the lathe. We just got chucked up on the three jaw chuck. We're running between centers, and we'll spin it up. I'm just going to take some fine emery cloth. I don't want to really remove a lot of material. I just want to polish this and I'll probably also hit it with some scotch bright uh, while we have it on here. So let's fire everything up and we'll get that done. All right, we're spinning at about 1200 RPM here and I'm just going to take some uh, emery cloth and we're just going to polish these out. sand and done. I'm just going to come in here, like I said, with some scotch bright and just polish these out a little bit more. This is just barely an abrasive, but it really will help polish things out. Let's see what we got. Still some staining on there, but nothing I'm too worried about. Um, that is a lot smoother, and that should run fine in there. 
Like I said, we do have a few little grooves in here, but these are not very deep, and that will be below the, uh, the surface of the, the Babbitt. So again, that's just kind of will serve as an oil groove. With Babbitt, you really you need to have about 80% contact. So um, we can, we're gonna be more than enough there. We're, we're in good shape. So I think we're about ready to kind of put this back together. I put the cutter head in and this thing is, I mean, it's running super smooth. I think that's just gonna be just fine. But we need to make some shims on these caps. If you look, that rocks just a little bit. And the reason is, is that you gotta put a shim in there to kind of take up that space. And we're just gonna use some gasket paper for these shims. Uh, I was telling him a while ago that a lot of the um, old machines that I take apart, they just use like single layer cardboard, like a, like a cracker box or something like that is what they would cut their shims out of. So I use gasket paper, it's, it's fairly, it's thin enough, you can get it in different thicknesses and um, it, holds up good to heat, holds up good to the oil. So that's just what I kind of have made these out of. And I'm just gonna trace out the shape here and let me get a straight edge and I'll do that inside. And we're just gonna cut these out by hand. And we'll just trace that on there. Whoop, my pencil lead broke, but we're fine. So we'll just go ahead. I need to cut out a set of these. I got. At least four, we'll put these in here. I may need to do multiple layers of this, and I may even need to find some different thickness stuff. I'll just have to see uh, if we need to make a thinner layer to go in here to get it properly spaced, or whether two layers or one layer is gonna be enough. It's just kind of do it and see. So let's go ahead and cut these out. All right, so. See, that one goes right here. There we go. I'll have to figure out where the holes go, and I got some punches. We'll punch those in a minute. But uh, let me go ahead and get the other one cut out here. I think the other one needs to be just like this one. Just make sure here, just flipping it over. Yeah, that'll work. I'll have to trim it up a little bit down there. Now, does this reservoir revealed? Um, yeah, because it's you got. Yeah, we'll that, we'll make a, a we'll make a hole to go down through That's there. That's where the wick goes. Another wick. Or? No, so that or that right there will just be a, the filler hole. So okay. we'll we'll make sure we punch a, a clearance hole for that too, and then you can also oil them from the top. It's gonna go in on this side. And I'm just gonna put this on top. And I'm just gonna kind of do this by hand right now. And that actually, by the time I tighten that down, that may work just fine. We may have to put a little bit more in there when it, when it clamps down, but that may be just fine. Now I do need to cut some holes in this. I'll do that in a little bit, but uh, we'll go ahead and get the One's cut for the other side first, and then I get my holes cut. And I got my shims cut for this side as well. And just feeling it like it is right now, I think that's gonna be about right. So we may not have to put any more shims in there. We won't know until we tighten it down and see how tight it gets. But before we do that, I do need to cut the holes in here for the bolt holes. So I'm just gonna take a pencil and we're just gonna kind of trace these holes in here and then I got some punches and we'll punch these out. Now one thing I'll note is this hole right here, there's one on both sides, that's where you fill the oil to the reservoir. There's a hole that goes all the way down and then you can actually get to that reservoir up underneath it. So we'll go ahead and punch that clear to you as well. All right, let me go get my punches and we'll get those holes cleaned, cleared out and we'll tighten this thing up and see how it feels. All right, so we're getting ready to cut these holes out and to do that, I've got, got a set of uh, punches here. These are dies for cutting gaskets. That's exactly what they're for. So let me figure out what size we need to do. 
Yeah, I called that a ruler. Someone is going to call me out on that. That is actually a scale. Yes, I know the difference, but it still comes out as a ruler. That's half inch. I'm going to go up one size larger than that. So we'll go nine sixteenths. And I got the little piece here, and we'll just put that over the top of that and tap it out and cut it out. So here we go. We'll just uh, knock that right out. Got a nice hole there. Now the other one is smaller. I'm just going to do a probably a three eighths on that one. Yeah, that should be fine. Here we go. I got that three eighths die in there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this small one out over here. And we'll go back to the nine sixteenths on the other ones. Well, there we go. We got all of our holes done, the bolt holes, as well as the oil clearance holes. So let's go ahead and put this back together and we'll go ahead and tighten up those bolts and see how well she spins. So we're putting these back together and I don't know why, but he was telling me that the originals had a, a square head set screw with a bolt is what they were using to tighten these on there. Um, and I don't know why we need that, but I have a bunch of the square head set screws. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna just do it kind of like it was originally. And I got some new nuts on there. So we'll tighten these up and put them all in here. And like I said, I cannot think of any reason why that would be preferred over just a regular cap screw or, you know, bolt but we're going, to, we're going to do it like it was originally. I'm doing restoration work. I try to, try to keep things as original as possible. It's just one of my pet peeves, I guess. You know, I like, to, I like for things to go back the way they were originally designed, and I try not to re-engineer something unless it's just absolutely necessary. Right, I'm just going to snug these up a little bit. One thing too with Babbitt bearings is you don't have to just crank down on these things. You know, they just need to be snug and depending on your, your spacings, you can crank down on them if you got enough if you need to, but you know, don't feel like you have to. And I'm just feeling how tight that feels. And that's a little, I mean, just a tad bit too tight right there. Yeah, that's better there. But that feels real good. I'm feeling for up and down play. There's not even any oil in here right now. And that feels great. So I think we made the right call as far as not having to re-pour these. Not quite done yet. I do need to get the wicks in the bottom, but I wanted to get the shims figured out first. So we're gonna pull these caps back off and we'll get a wick down there for the oil reservoir. So for the wick, uh, basically, what I like to use is felt. Uh, a wool-based felt holds up really well over time, and uh, I've got some different ones that I've ordered over the years for different projects, and I've got some on in in-house, and that is the perfect thickness right there to fit down this one. We're gonna have to do a little massaging on the other one to get it to fit, but uh, we're just gonna cut a piece to fit down in there, that oil will basically just wrap around the bottom and it'll wick right up through this to, to go up in there. So we'll cut a piece. I'll get a, figure out what size we need. We'll cut a piece and just drop it down in there and then clamp the shaft down on top of it. So I just cut a piece here. See if I got the right size.
There we go. You don't want to just fit right down in there. It's a little bit high, but when we clamp it down, it'll press in. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this reservoir up with oil as well. Now, when it comes to oil for Babbitt bearings, um, there's a lot of opinions out there and a lot of different uh, reasoning for things. If you look at the old literature, most of it says to, to use a lightweight machine oil, which could mean a lot of different things. Um, I basically use a spindle oil. This is a really lightweight oil here for running in spindles. And, um, you know, something like a sewing machine type oil or three-in-one type oil, if you're really light oil, is what you ideally want to run in Babbitt bearings. But with that said, uh, the most important thing you want to do when oiling Babbitt bearings, you want to make sure they're oiled. Uh, I know people that run 30-weight engine oil on these things, and they work fine. It, they, they need, it's not super high-tech. You just need to make sure you have oil in there. Ideally, I think a lightweight oil is better. Uh, a non-detergent oil you want to definitely use, but uh, spindle oil is what I use. And again, that's what most of the, when you look in the old literature that I've been able to find, that's really kind of what it calls for. I'm not going to fill these up right now just because he's got to haul this back, but I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of oil in here. We'll go ahead and get that wick where it's got some oil on it. And we'll just go ahead and yeah, put a little bit down in that reservoir. And then I'm gonna get the other side. We'll get a wick in it as well. And we're gonna bolt this back together and go back together. Now, the one thing I will say on lubricating Babbitt bearings is uh, something I see a lot, particularly on machines that I bring in that other people have done, is you'll find grease zerks that are in these Babbitt bearings. Uh, generally speaking, you do not wanna run Babbitt on grease. Um, if it's a really slow turning something, yeah, it's probably fine. You know, if it's just something that's oscillating back and forth and not making the full res revolution, probably not the end of the world. But anything that's got any speed to it, grease is not going to give you enough lubrication. The whole concept of Babbitt bearings is, is that you've got this soft material in here and you've got a layer of oil between it and the shaft. Under ideal circumstances, that shaft is never actually making contact with the Babbitt. It is riding on a thin film of oil. Uh, under ideal conditions. Now the reality is is that sometimes we don't have ideal conditions and it's going to hit that shaft, that material in there, but having that soft material, it won't damage the shaft. And that's the reason you get some wear in them from time to time. But with a light oil, you'll get that thin layer of oil all the way around that shaft. Things will run like they need to. With grease, you're not, it's too thick. You can't get a good thin layer all the way around and that shaft is never really running on a solid a film of oil like you would with a lightweight oil. So anyway, there we go. I'm gonna get the other wick put in and uh, we'll get these things put together and try them out. All right, we got our wicks in. So we'll go ahead and put our shaft back in here. And you can see where that oil is just pulling right up onto them. And like I said, you just want a thin layer. It doesn't take a whole lot. Put our shims back in here and like I said he, they'll want to fill that reservoir when they get back but he's got to haul this all the way back to Tennessee so I'm not gonna put a bunch of oil in him it's just gonna leak all over his trunk of his car and we'll go ahead and tighten these back on tops here too. Again, I'm not going crazy with the oil right now. And that is smooth. I think this is pretty much ready. The last thing I want to do is uh, we're going to put a little wicking material in these holes, mainly just to keep trash out of them. Um, this is a wood shop, so you get wood chips and stuff going down in there. So we put a little felt in there that way the chips can't get down into the bearing. So we'll come up with something to go in there as well. All right, so I just cut a little block of felt here and we'll just kind of push that down in there and that'll, that'll just kind of keep any trash out of there. And that one's a little bit smaller. I think we can get it in there. Let me get a little pick or something to poke it down. There we go. So these little troughs in the top, you can also oil in there. 
the oil just kind of sits in there and it'll seep down through that little hole. And uh, if I was y'all, I would probably just take like a little, turn a little wooden peg or something to go in there to keep those covered up so that you don't get trash down in those and you can pull that little cap off to when you get done. So that would be what I recommend for y'all to do when y'all get this back, just to keep trash out of those reservoirs. And with that, I think that's a wrap. We got one Babbitt cutter head kind of reworked. You know, when they called me up and asked me to do this, I thought we were gonna be re-pouring bearings. This turned out to be a lot easier. And again, there's just, there's no reason to pour the new bearings unless it's just necessary. And these bearings are actually in pretty dang good shape. So uh, I think they'll be, be fine for years to come on this. So all thanks right. so much, Keith. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Quite Knox welcome. Makers, thank you. And uh, yeah, got a little something for you. Oh, awesome. All righty. Great. Well, I appreciate it, guys. With that, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always very helpful. Helps speed the algorithms on YouTube. Helps new people find my site. As always, a big, huge thank you to those who support the site financially through Patreon and PayPal. Helps me to be able to justify to take the time to shoot these videos and bring them to you uh, when I could be just out here working, making money the old-fashioned way. And uh, with that, we're going to sign off. As always, again, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video.